Hi, I'm Patrick, creator of Rapid Resizer. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the resizing step. So you've probably gotten here by uh, loading a design you already had into it, or creating a design with the letter or picture stencil maker. And this is sort of the hub page for working on uh, an individual design. So you can click customize and access all these other uh, changes you can make to your design and then they lead you back here to customize further or finally resize and print it. Uh, now one change you'll often need to make for your design to print accurately is to ensure it's straight and tightly cropped. If there's any space at the sides of the design that will get resized along with the rest of it and your design will print smaller than expected. Uh, now this design is from the letter stencil maker so it's already tightly cropped but if your design isn't uh, make sure to click the prepare your design button and that takes you through the straightening and cropping steps. Now I have a few different sizing methods here of course you can just type in a size and by default it if you type in change the width it'll change the height to be proportional. Uh, you can also override that to stretch or squeeze your design. Uh, there's a size by percentage option. So this uh, assumes it knows the original size of your design in real world units like inches. Uh, it tries to get that from the file if it has that information, uh, but it might not always be able to know so you should check that uh, its measurement of the original real width is correct, and then you can adjust that by percent. Uh, there's also the option to size by part. So this is where you can drag the ends of this line to mark a part of the design, and then set how long that line should be. So say I want this part to be two inches long, click use size, and then it uh, changes the overall size so that that part will be the size we just gave. Uh, last option is fit page. So this fits the design to be the largest size that will fit on one page. Now this will usually be smaller than the full page because by default printers usually aren't set to or able to print all the way to the end. So this fits it within uh, Rapid Resizer's default half an inch margin. Uh, once your design's all ready, you might want to save it to your account if you have a Rapid Resizer Designer or Pro version. Uh, you can also download your design. You can either download the unsized original file or you can download the resized PDF file. And the PDF's a standard file that you can print without Rapid Resizer. You can share that with other people and they can print it without the program at that size. Uh, there's also a repeat option if you have a small design and you want it to print out eight times on a page, for example, that'll do that. Uh, the 3D view, it's a fun little way to see your, see your design in 3D. And last, there's a share option if you own the rights to your design and you'd like other uh, Rapid Resizer users to be able to use or build on your design, you can share it into the Rapid Resizer design library there. Now finally, you get to print your design. I'll set this back to a more interesting size. Now when you click print, it actually reveals a few instructions. These try to be specific to the web browser and device you have, but it's just a reminder of the things to make sure are right so that your design will actually print at the size you gave here. So for example, I'm using the Chrome web browser. So the main thing in that is to make sure that its scale setting is 100%. Now that we've been reminded of that, uh, click proceed. This finally brings up the resizing that you can send to the printer. I'll click settings, see, yep, scale's 100%. It all looks correct. Make sure everything's right before it's printed. And then you can click print to send that off to your printer. This will look a bit different depending on your web browser and device, but that's the general idea. But as I was saying, 
when you're actually sending your design to the pr your printer and you see those final print settings, make sure it looks right, that the scale's correct, that the page orientation and paper size are all the same as in Rapid Resizer. Now last, you have a few options to customize your resizing further. You can of course set the paper size. Uh, by default, it numbers the pages and in column, comma, row format. Uh, that's especially helpful because Rapid Resizer will skip blank pages, so that helps, to lay, helps you to lay them out. Uh, there are a few more options. You can override the page orientation. By default, it chooses the orientation that will use the fewest, pa fewest pages, but you can override that. Uh, you can also override the line width. By default, lines will grow with the enlargement. So if your designs was made in the letter stencil maker or the designer, it will be a vector. So at least those lines will enlarge smoothly and you can nicely override the line width here. Uh, if your design was an image, a raster file, uh, it can still has a couple options to control the line width, but your results will vary depending on the quality of the image. If part of your design kind of falls on an awkward page seam, you can use this offset option to move the placement of your design within all the pages. So for example, if you just wanted to, by default it's centered, if you just wanted to move it up an inch, you'd enter negative one in the second field. Uh, the page border option that outlines the area within the page margin in the printout, so that's the area you would cut out. Uh, guidelines outlines where the design image actually is across the pages. Uh, sometimes that's useful. And last, there's the page margin. So by default, printers usually won't print to the edge of the page, so I have to add a margin and 0.5 is a, a safe value. Uh, if, you've, if your printer is capable of borderless and you've set it to that, then you could change the margin to zero, or you could try making the margin a little lower if you wanted to get more per page, but it's usually just safest to uh, leave it this way. Uh, last few things to cover, uh, when you're done working on a project and you've saved it to start a new project, click on the new project link in the header or to open one of your old projects. Uh, if you need help, uh, click on the help button here. Uh, it's best to contact me from where you're having the problem because then I can see what you're doing. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful.